don't put all your eggs in one basket. Hey everybody, this is Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. Food storage, right? We're preppers. If you're here, you're of the preparedness mindset. We have food storage, we have preps, water storage, etc. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't have all your preps at your primary location, your house, your property, whatever your situation may be. Even if you have a 200 acre homestead in awesome conditions and everything's perfect, rural, wooded, where you can have caches around the property, yeah, do that, definitely. Have some in your house, have some in your root cellar, have some in your pantry, have some food storage in your house, have it in caches around your property if you have the ability to, but where else should you put your food storage? Where else should you put caches? And what else should be in your caches? Food is important, of course. Water. First off, let's get to where. Well, where comes along with a lot of other things, like things snowball in the preparedness world. Bug out locations. Even if you are, say you think, okay, I have a homestead, rural property, all this stuff like that, good, or I live way up in the mountains, something like that, I live in my bug out location. Well, not true. If you're living there, it's not a bug out location. That's a bug in location. You still have to have bug out locations. At least one, hopefully two, you gotta have a backup, right? Backup plan. Because the best plan never survives first contact. Meaning that no matter how much you plan, things can go wrong. Murphy's Law, what can go wrong will go wrong. So I would say at least two, if not three, or more bug out locations in different cardinal directions. So that, well not cardinal, different directions. So that if you can't get to one, you can get to the other one. So anyway, we're not really talking about bug out locations. And depending on the distance, so you should have caches at your bug out locations. But a lot of work goes into that. Do you own the property at the bug out locations? Are there structures? Are there not? What's the situation? How safe is anything you put at a bug out location? How far away is it? Do you need caches en route? Plan on getting there on foot. Worst case scenario, right? If you have a vehicle, great. You can gather those caches on the way or you can just leave them for future use. If you know where they are, save them. But anyway, have your food storage, whatever else your preps consist of, in multiple locations. Because what happens if you plan to bug in? Which is optimal, I think, because you have, you know, I have my gardens here. I have, I'm set up. I don't want to bug out, but we have to have the capability to do so. So have some food storage at your house, of course. If you have to bug in, you got to be prepared for that. But you also got to be pre prepared to bug out. Cash is en route. Cash is at the bug out locations. All this kind of stuff. Maybe a friend's house. Maybe a storage unit here. Storage unit over there. Depending on where your situation is, where you live what the dynamic is, rural, urban, suburban, those kind of things. And the ability to bury caches, hide caches, dependent on the terrain, where you live. If it's a frozen tundra all the time, are you going to drill through 10 feet of ice to get your bug out or your cache? Mm, no. You guys got to figure that out though. What works for you and how it works for you. But don't keep your, all your eggs in one basket. Spread it out because you never know what's going to happen. Second off, what should you have in your caches? I'm talking about caches and route to somewhere else. A safe haven, a bug out location, a mountaintop cabin, a um, cabin in the woods, your buddy's house, whatever it may be. If you got to travel more than say like 10 miles or something like that, that where you can walk easily on foot, you need to have stashes. Even if you have to do that, due to a dynamic changing situation, it may take you a lot longer to travel that 10 miles than normal. So still have a cache, maybe halfway. What should be in the caches? Well, definitely food, definitely water, maybe a defensive tool, something to defend yourself with, maybe an extra knife, 
maybe, um, oh, and food in caches, I feel should be ration type food. Rations mean no preparation needed. You can just eat it. Canned goods. Canned goods are good. Uh, ration bars, like we talk about SOS, Grizzly, Daytrex, those kind of things, um, where you can just eat them. They're like the sugar cookie bars or shortbread, those kind of things. MREs, um, things like that. No preparation needed. Maybe a flashlight, maybe an extra ferro rod and striker, or go easy, some extra lighters, some extra cordage, some 550 cord, maybe a multi-tool, maybe some spare batteries for anything that you use. That's always a good thing, but the stuff's gotta be rotated also, remember that. What else? Maybe an extra tarp, an extra hammock, Extra water purification, throw a mini Sawyer water filter in there or some water purification tablets or some bleach or whatever, whatever your prepping style dictates. There's a lot of different things you could throw in there. That kind of stuff, that kind of covers the basics. You know, tailor it to your needs. You could be in the desert. You could be in the jungle. You could be in a frozen tundra. What's in your cache really is dependent upon those kind of things. But yeah, make sure that you spread it out. Even if you're just starting and say you, I don't know, for example, say you live in an apartment in the city. Okay, well, what are your options then? Well, do you have access to storage units close to you? What about a PO box? Or not a PO box, a safe deposit box, which that's not really that good of an idea either because it's inside a bank and stuff like that. Power goes down, you're not going to get in. Friends' houses, um, local parks where you might possibly be able to get in and bury something in a remote location of the park where not that many people are going to at night, etc. But then you got to deal with problems like um, problem people, trouble people that come out at night, those kind of things. But anyway, tailor it to fit your needs. But please don't keep all your eggs in one basket. Please spread it out. Um, and seriously, bug out locations. You gotta at least have an idea of where you're gonna go. Identify places on maps. Really, you gotta go boots on the ground though. You gotta go visit those places. You gotta go see what, is this actually a tenable place to go? Is it actually sustainable? Is it secure? Is it safe? Is it right next to something you didn't realize was there? Is it right next to a prison? Is it right next to a homeless encampment? Is it right next to, um, I don't know, a really bad neighborhood? I, I don't know. Are there bad drugs in there? Do threat assessment. Get online, type it up. You know, you can look up um, like child molesters in the area. You can look up crime rates in the area. You can look up all different kinds of things like that. Gang activity in the area, whatever it may be and location of water near there. Is there water on site? Is it uh, dependent on the grid? There's a lot that goes into this. So start now. Establish a bug out location or two. Establish routes to it. There's a lot to this, <laughs> a lot to this. Um, another thing you might wanna have in your caches are those little mini portable solar chargers to charge your batteries, your devices. Um, anyway, yeah, I, I can just blah, 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 but I'm not going to. Um, it's very important you guys prepare a little every day. It's very important you start thinking about big picture stuff. I know it's real easy to go onto Amazon or go to the store and buy some food storage or buy this or buy that, but we really need to start thinking big picture now. We've always, you always need to think big picture, but I think it's really especially time for that now. The more in depth things, the things that are more difficult to do, it's easy to, to get online and order yourself a year of food storage. Yeah, it is if you got the money. But what about bug out locations? What about caches? What about alternate routes to your bug out locations? What about rally points? What about comm plans with your people? If you don't have people, Get off of Amazon, stop ordering yourself stuff and go find some people. Because it doesn't matter how much food storage you have, if you don't have people to help you protect it, 
to help you take care of it. If you're on a homestead to help you uh, grow, till, harvest, raise your animals, all these kind of things, along with everything else, unless you got a large family, you know, if you got, you know, wife, husband, both fully capable, six early teens to late teens kids at home, they're all fully capable. Yeah, you still need other people. Because for one thing, those kids have only learned really probably mostly what they've learned is what you've taught them. So there's no variance in skill sets. Variance in skill sets is important. So I guess this kind of video is also about mutual assistance groups because groups are so important right now. You gotta have backup. It's morale too. It's really good for your morale to know, hey, I'm not in this alone. I have somebody else that I can count on. That's also part of not putting all your eggs in one basket. One basket meaning one brain. I don't want all my capabilities reliant on my brain. You know, and my wife's brain, my oldest kid's brain, stuff like that. Outside influences telling me, oh, wait, what about this? And be like, oh, psh, I didn't notice that. Or, hey, I got a better way of doing this. Great. You got to have an open mind, though, and listen to other people. Be careful what you're showing them at first. Work their way in, those kind of things. But anyway, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You guys get the gist. You got to figure it out for yourselves. I can't do it for you. All I can do is give you the ideas, give you the, uh, you know, uplift you and empower you to get out and do these things. So please do the things. I love you guys. Please subscribe. Please hit the like button. Please comment below. Please share the videos. Check out all the links in the description below. We got great place for food storage there. We got Olight discount code if you like Olight, um, which I have had not any problems with so far. Um, we got our email in there, asymmetricalpreparedness at gmail.com. We got our Patreon where we do all the uh, tactical stuff, defensive, security related stuff, dollar a month. Links in the description. Love you guys. Have a wonderful day. Blessings to you and yours.